The Ducks showed some like early but couldn't hold on, giving up three goals in a three and a half minute span to lose tonight's game against Chicago with a final score of six to five. Hello everyone, I'm Tanya Lyon alongside Register Beat writer Eric Stevens and special guest Lisa Dillman with the LA Times. We'll start with you Eric, ESPN Scott Burnside described the Ducks play as of late as baffling. How would you sum up tonight's game? Well, I think that's the perfect word for it. Uh, it it's, it's amazing um, how many different times the Ducks have found a way to lose games during this stretch and I think tonight um, may have been uh, what you could say the tip of the iceberg uh, for them. I mean the, the definitive example of it to, to blow a 4-2 lead when you've struggled so much. Uh, it, it truly is baffling and, and there's just a myriad of reasons why they're stuck in this uh, run like this. But I think right, the main thing right now is confidence. They have no confidence right now in terms of holding a lead, playing with the lead, and you're seeing it on the ice. Lisa, what would you say is wrong with this team? A lot of the fans have uh, kind of questioned what's going on. They think it's the bottom six. They think it's the top six. What? I mean, you're in the locker room all the time. What is the problem? You can take your pick on any given night. One time, it's Saku Koivu taking a lame penalty. It's Corey Perry taking a penalty. It's the big line failing to achieve. It's a big line falling apart in the third period. On any given night, it seems to be changeable. And I think that's why they can't figure out what's going wrong. There's been a rumor for the past three seasons that the reason why the Ducks haven't performed well is that they no longer want to play under Randy Carlisle. I'll pose this question to both of you guys. Um, is there any truth to that rumor, you think? And will we see a coaching change this season? Yeah, I mean, that, that's something that has lurked, you know, say, deep in, deep in the background uh, or so. And there may be certain players that, uh, you know, maybe not necessarily think of, you know, Randy as, you know, the, the perfect coach for them. But if that rumor was true, then why would they have, you know, terrific second halves that they've been able to parlay into playoff performance, you know, playoff appearances in the last few years? If that is true, why wouldn't you just not play for them all year? Uh, it, that, that's why I don't put too much stock into that. Lisa, do you think we'll see a coaching change this season? I don't think so. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again. Um, but fans and, and even the media, they want the quick fix. They want the quick change. But they gave him a contract extension. I can't imagine them making a change. And I, I don't really know who would take over if it was. That's the question you have to ask. If not Randy, well, then who? Who's the obvious choice to step into the fray? Yeah, the, the key point is, I mean, Rand, Randy is signed to an extension through 2014. Bob Murray, who, who gave him the extension, along with the ownership, he signed through 2016. So those two are, are, are in place. And barring a major shakeup from above or a major decision from above, you, you can't really see that changing. You can't really see ownership taking on wanting to pay two, sal two coaching salaries. So more than likely the changes are going to be within the room, possibly a major trade, maybe not, we'll see. Speaking of major trade, there's a little bit of a buzz upstairs in the press box today that Bobby Ryan, who was supposed to be out with a hip contusion, you know, may really have been benched because he didn't seem injured. Do you think there's any truth to that? No, I think he was definitely injured, and Eric will attest to that. He had suffered an injury in Phoenix, and um, he even talked about it today. Um, his name's come up, Ryan Getzlaff's name has come up. I think there's a couple untouchables. Obviously, Corey Perry, Cam Fowler, they're untouchable. Um, it's hard to make a trade in the NHL. I mean, you have cab considerations, you have to have the right fit, and you can't make a trade that will jeopardize you down the road. So, I think, Yeah, well, I don't mean to cut in, but I, I think one of the things that you also want to be careful for is when you're dealing with trading core players, a lot of times those type of trades backfire on you, especially if you're trying to fill several holes, which is what the Ducks have right now. They have several core players, but if you deal one of those, that could backfire you in the end. So that's why you have to be careful, and that's why you don't make a snap judgment in terms of playing, in terms of uh, trading one of your core players. Okay, so we'll wrap this up, and we'll give you both a chance to answer this. What's the answer then? What do they need to do in order to win some games and turn this around? I think they do need to make a trade. Whether it's a blockbuster trade, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if it could get done. But they do need to send a message that they're not going to stand pat with this situation. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I fully agree. I think it's time now. I think it's time that there may be, you have to maybe consider a major shakeup because the way this team is constructed, it does not look like a playoff team. And certainly with, you know, with this, this rut that they're going through, the way that they're losing points in the standings, they're not going to be able to make this up unless you consider shaking things up, telling everyone else in the room that this is how we're going to react to this. This is how we're going to react to the losing.